In my effort to start a religion over the pandemic, I coined a term, the Ersatzium. At some point, presumably after the JFK assassination, the American government, the most powerful military and economic force on the planet, knew that people couldn't handle the truth. I do not claim to know the whole truth myself about everything, but I have seen and read like every alternative narrative available and have like 20 years of esoteric knowledge and stuff like that. I can tell you with 100% assurity that there is a secret governance that does things in accordance with astrology as per their fixation with the sign of Virgo and their false flag events that happen in the sign of Virgo, which is August 22nd to September 22nd. I predicted the financial crisis publicly on social media in 2008. I could do this because Pluto, the planet that rules dark karmic happenings, entered Capricorn, the sign of finance, and also of evil and the devil historically. See how the devil card is associated with Capricornus the goat? That's because everything we think of as evil is actually delineated from Saturn, aka Satan, and its ruling sign Capricorn. Capricorn is cold, financially motivated, blunt, dire, serious, and cutting. Ergo, when Capricorn enters Pluto, there's going to be a wicked shitstorm that will be like death metal meets Black Monday. And that's what happened. I feel as though I have about 10% of what the Illuminati must understand in my pocket through advanced astrological knowledge because it has never failed me. A few people listen to me, but the vast majority of people still believe astrology is a pseudoscience, mainstream media tells the truth, I don't know what I'm talking about, etc. But I did, didn't I? I can't be the only person to make that connection about Pluto and Capricorn. Being that Masonic art always features astrology and the like, it stands to reason that Freemasons know astrology. Surely, they knew what I knew. The ersatzium is what I call the fake ersatz world that the government creates for the consumption of normal people and workers so that they have what Noam Chomsky called necessary illusions for society to function the way that the invisible architects of society want it to work. For instance, the company Facebook was created by a young dude named Mark Zuckerberg in 2004 in his Harvard dorm, right? Everyone knows that. No, I'm skeptical on that. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, is a research and development agency of the United States Department of Defense responsible for the development of emerging technologies for use by the military and the Pentagon. DARPA had since 1980 been experimenting with LifeLog, a means of tracking an individual's life from as soon as they committed an account to presumably death. It was a Pentagon-approved government program. The LifeLog program was canceled in February of 2004, the exact same month that Facebook launched. I have a tendency to believe that the government created Facebook and gave you a front-facing narrative of a young, cool tech nerd who's on SNL and never has a controversy or freakout or breakdown despite being worth billions. Never a sex scandal or a racist tirade or anything. Unrealistic, I contend. This is the symbol for Tubal Cain, the original Freemason, and this is the Facebook logo. Hidden in plain sight, maybe? I believe Zuckerberg is part of the Ersatzia. The government wanted to surveil you 24-7 and have you state your politics and whereabouts on a website they could easily monitor, and you wouldn't do it if they just said, give me your data, we're the government. But you would do it if it was a cool, hip thing for about eight years. If they can create Facebook and assumedly an actor or perhaps a patsy to front the situation, what else can they do? What else is a fictional Trojan horse of government control that exists in our everyday lives. I know quite well they did a similar thing with COVID. Without getting into it, forced medical vaccinations for a disease you have a 1% chance of getting reeks of PSYOP. And if you don't think so, you're in bad need of history lesson. Trump calls CNN and the like fake news, and he's right about that one. CNN has deliberately misled people on dozens of occasions to bolster a certain bias that is less than journalistic. Look at this footage from the first Gulf War wherein they want you to believe that Scud missiles are hitting a building in Saudi Arabia and the journalists will be safe if they just wear a mock army hard hat and a gas mask? It's like professional wrestling quality of illusion. But times were good and people didn't have the internet, so this was sufficient. CNN later paraded an alleged classmate of Adam Lanza's named Alex Israel, who had never actually been in any of his classes, believed his mother was a teacher, which wasn't true, but was part of the government narrative, and looked and sounded exactly like Katie Foley, James Foley's sister, when that story was reported. Hmm. Guess what? The Alex Israel interview has been scrubbed from YouTube. I, for one, do not see the reason to scrub that interview, 
if there's no conspiracy afoot. I believe all of the technology that has so rapidly dominated all of our lives is part of the ersatium. I believe we have passed what I call the threshold, which is a hypothetical point at which governing this body of humans requires control beyond what the government is granted legally, because without the secret aspects of governance, society would fall apart. That is not crazy or a conspiracy theory. It's just a little bit ahead of the game. I think, once again, that every American can and should look at Obama's 2012 repeal of the Smith-Munt Act to understand just how deep the rabbit hole goes on that. The Smith-Munt Act was put in place to protect the people from the government propagandizing false narratives to the American people. And Obama got rid of that check and balance so that you could live completely immersed in the lie the government weaves from 9-11 to Sandy Hook and beyond. What is true? Does voting matter? Hell no. George Bush lost by a half million votes and still won the Electoral College. A half million people could have been more productive learning how to grow food or make clothes. When Neil Heslin, one of the Sandy Hook fathers, claims he held his son with a bullet in his head, which is impossible according to the official story because none of the parents were near the bodies, then that video is scrubbed from YouTube, but I have already put it on another video, so I have it. I feel I have touched the Arsatium. Then, last year, Neil Heslin went on television to directly address the Sandy Hook deniers. I lost my son. I buried my son. I held my son with a bullet hole through his head. That is not... So you believe that guy has an erroneous memory of his own son's death? If it is fake, and it is, how can you vote for or support a president that lied about such an egregious thing as child murder? You will, because the ersatium is in full effect. For now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, you'll look like a fucking idiot. There's no term for the world the government is building to atrophy your arguments against its total takeover of your lives and thoughts and headspace. But I made one, the ersatium.